time of the year again. Another year, another firework. Now, if you remember last year, we made the world's largest firework tank. Okay, run, run. This year, I think I'll make another one of my childhood favorites, the flying helicopter fireworks. But first, story time. It was the year 1998-ish. My dad was buying some fireworks at our local Foy store. Amongst the limited selection of overpriced fireworks, we found these weird red pill-shaped fireworks with little wings. I was fascinated as wings usually equals flight. So we bought a few of them. Unfortunately, my smooth brain couldn't figure out how these things worked. We tried lighting them and they spun around, but they didn't fly. My next logical solution was to maybe stick it in a pipe. Maybe it'll spin around and fly. Well, that didn't work quite either. At this point, I was about to give up, so I just lit another one and just tossed it on the ground. And for some reason, this one flew. So what happened all of a sudden? The third fart flew just fine. Well, it turns out these need to be orientated in such a specific way to fly. For example, you can't take a rocket-style firework and light it upside down and expect it to work. However, this was not as obvious to 10-year-old me as to how to use this thing. These helicopter-style fireworks use a combination of thrust, gyroscopic stability, and wings to fly. Much like this helicopter-style toy, spinning it around with my hand causes it to fly. The power source, however, comes from a horizontal-facing rocket motor rather than the torque created by my hand. The spinning motion is translated into lift by the wings mounted on the body of the firework. The fun part about all of this is now these fireworks have a label that says this side facing up. It didn't have these when I was a kid, so I was really confused on how to use these things. On another note, we're actually going to be building one more style of helicopter firework. I don't really know why these are called helicopters, because they don't really have wings or anything. But these are gyroscopically stabilized helicopter fireworks. How these work is they have a booster motor which spins them round and round and round, just creating some gyroscopic stability. Then they have a booster motor which kicks off after that's happened, thus launching into the sky. The fun thing about these is sometimes they don't really even feature wings at all. They usually just feature some sort of stability or top function just so they can stabilize and then they kick off going upwards. I suppose we should probably go out to the field and test these and see which designs we like the most before we blow these things up. Literally, blow them up in size. <laughs> Pretty cool. What? I can't hear you. I got these sick Raycons in my ear. Our sponsor for this video. Are you tired of your wire tangly headphones? Then you're gonna love these E25 wireless earbuds from Raycon. These Raycon wireless earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. They sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Raycons are great for working at home, working out, tooling around at the shop, and listening to music in general. Their everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. With 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. It also comes in new fun colors. These earbuds are already really affordable, but if you check out the link in the description at buyraycon.com slash you can save up to 15% off your order. So what are you waiting for? Get some of these explosive deals and try out the Raycons, they're pretty sweet. Now, we've already lit a few of these, but we need to see if we can make them bigger and if they will work with the way I want to make them with rocket motors. So we have that over there. So Sam made this earlier, and this has a model rocket engine, a C65. We're gonna light this and see what this does, if this is sufficient. Sam, your bets, how high do you think this will go? Not very high until we move the engine. Down, you think? 
Yes. I don't think it's going to work very well either way. I just don't think this is enough rocket power to really get this to really spin. Usually these things have more powder in them, such as these things. Usually you have to burn more of that to go higher. I don't think this is going to work very good, but we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. Take one of the giant helicopter pill firework. All right. precisely nowhere. Yeah, we need bigger motors. We might need to reduce the pitch of the blades too because these don't scale very linearly with the way those work versus the way this works so as far as aerodynamics goes. So I think it's something to do with Reynolds numbers. I'm gonna try a slightly bigger motor out the side. I think this will work better. All right, so we removed that rocket motor. Sam thinks it's gonna be better if we put it somewhere else. Because on the firework, it actually oh, points down a little. We should give you the small motor first, too, just to see which one works. Let's see, we'll do... I think that's just gonna flip over, cause it to flip over. I don't think it's gonna work. Oh my God. We have one more big motor. This is an E12. I think this thing is definitely going to suck to make it bigger. The bigger it goes, the more inefficient it gets with this much pitch in the wing. So I guess we'll try a big one, but my money is on these style spinners. The ones that have some sort of external force to give them the gyroscopically spin, and then a thrust motor, because those are just better rockets than these helicopter style wing ones. So what are your thoughts on this one going higher? Yay? This yay. one will go higher. All right, yeah, I, I bet you it would go higher too. Yep, yeah, let's do it. You should spin it. So Save's got his triangle thing now. We've ditched the fancy electronics because they weigh too much. We tried on the tray, but this kind of backfired, sort of. Anyways, we're gonna give up and use this view. Okay. The, the issue with this one is gonna be the timing. If he gets it right, it'll go to the moon. If not, it's gonna flop around. Stay. Oh, he's pooping. Your dog's pooping. Stay. Stay. Good, at least. <laughs> <It's high. laughs> uh, well, I think we figured it out from what I saw. Even even if you got the timer right, the thing wouldn't have flown. It's just too heavy because I saw the engine only carry up just a few inches. So we're definitely going to put a bigger motor in that one. Fourth time to try. <laughs> Let's try it again. Now we have the D motor instead of the C motor, so it should go a lot higher. And the fuse is a lot better because it doesn't weigh as much as all the electronics did. And now that we have the middle fuse, I can time it easier. Because it burns at two to five seconds per foot instead of one second per foot. Three, two, one, go! All right, it go. better work. All right, let's put a bigger engine in. Yeah, volcano. Pretty epic. It's probably gonna catch on fire now. All 
right, we got some new wings and a new uh, body. This one has a little bit more of an airfoil shape, so I just took my time making this one. We're gonna adjust the pitch of the propeller too for two launches. I only have two more motors, so we're gonna try this angle, which is just a few degrees upwards, and then I'll probably do a more shallow one, which would uh, make it take more spins to go up. But the rocket motor may be better longer, so it might actually go up higher overall. All right, so that went pretty good. Unfortunately, the altimeter fell off, so we didn't get a reading there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crack these loose. I'm gonna try less pitch and see if that makes it go higher. It seems a little bit counterintuitive, but we may get more RPMs in there, so it may actually just be able to climb and fly higher. It seems this engine D11 with less pitched wings slightly. Not sure if this will make a whole big difference, but I'm pretty sure this is the optimum angle, or at least the other one was. We're just really trying to trim it up. Okay, that wasn't the optimum angle because the wing fell off. So one thing I forgot to account for is if I took less pitch on the wings, the, the whole thing spins faster. When you spin it faster, there's more centrifugal force. It pulls in everything. So basically it pulled one of the wings out and a lot of that, a lot of the RPM wasn't really converted to lift very efficiently. So I figured basically where we had it was better. So more pitch slightly is good. Too much pitch and it's stalled and it doesn't really develop all the lift. So I think I figured about just how good it's gonna be for this design. I guess I'm gonna build a big one now. Alright, we got these giant fireworks built. I painted mine up. It's the pill. Sam's got the magic crystal. I, does this thing actually have a name? I'm not sure if these fireworks actually have names. At least this, this helicopter one. Wait, oh yeah, it says it right there. Two color spaceship. Alright, I'm gonna do mine first and then we're gonna do Sam's. What are you predicting, Sam? How high do you think that's gonna go? So, I think it's gonna go slower than the medium one, but actually go higher. Because it's gonna be draggier. Okay. Uh, I think I'll maybe go a total of 20 feet. Anyways, there are three E16 motors. All right, let's go ahead and light this thing. about like 50 feet or so. That oh no, it's melted. Oh, it landed right in front of the camera. <laughs> oh no. I was hoping to get another shot of this. <laughs> it's totally melted. Oh, I might need to up my rocket motor size. Oh. Well, it did work. We did achieve flight. Maybe a whole toy of like 30 or 40 revolutions. Crap. Whoa, look at that. Okay, a little bit of interjection. If you look at the rocket, there's actually a case failure. Not all the motors actually produce thrust. The fire burst out through the side of the hill thing, and that's basically a, a case failure of one of the um, cheap Estes motors. So that really could have gone a lot higher if the rocket were to actually produce thrust, but it actually just failed. And then there's the uh, propellant flying out of the uh, engine casing. So you're probably only flying on maybe like one or maybe two motors.
All right, I might Sam. need a bigger motor. You just want to go for all the marbles and put all the engines in there? Yeah. All right, let's just do it because I don't think there's going to be a second shot after that. All right, so with the catastrophic uh, event with mine completely melting down and this foam not being the greatest for this sort of stuff, Sam is going to go for all the marbles. We have two F24 engines, which is a lot more power than the E motors I was using. So this will uh. probably send it to the moon or destroy it completely on takeoff. We don't know. Also, the timing has to be right with the spin system, because if the spin system is wrong and the rocket doesn't spin, when this thing shoots off, it's going to go in any direction it decides to go. So it could be completely disastrous if the fusing is not correct. Oh, okay, I guess we get a second chance. I don't know if we can like that. Uh, yeah, that might be a problem because it didn't ignite for some reason. Okay, ready? Ah! Oh, did it not light that fuse? No, it had to. Yeah, it burned through. So it just didn't light. It's still smoking, so we'll leave it. But... You gotta take the glasses. Yeah, it looks like we might not be able to light them like that. Let's play around with one in the dirt. Okay. Okay, I got two equal lengths of fuse, but we don't know when it's going to set it off. So there's going to be... Alright, well according to this, it looks like the timing should work. I don't know, we're almost out of fuse. You better get it right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I'm not. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. He got it right! He did it! Oh, oh yeah, it was awesome! <laughs> he didn't go very high, but it was still awesome! I think it went higher than that one. It definitely went higher than this one. So I, I think the verdict on these giant fireworks is they just don't scale as well as the little ones do. At least when you make them that big. I'm just saying to be scaled that would have to have like 20 or 30 pounds of oh, yeah. rocket I mean, propellant in it. It would work better if this thing was full propellant but there's also a chance the FBI would be knocking at my door and it would also probably blow up. That's another thing. Those things usually come very close to my vehicles, and that was no exception. <laughs> Alright, yeah, make sure you check out our, our last 4th of July video. We did the giant tank. Let us know what other giant fireworks you want to see, because we'll definitely make one of these every year if you guys like these sort of videos. That's it.